Welcome to West Elm Creek and this part of the video is going to be teaching you about on-site monitoring. Where to monitor, where to fill the bottles, how to fill out the data sheet, all sorts of stuff like that. So thank you for joining us here today at West Elm Creek. So we are going to start by filling out the data sheet in my bag that I brought. Kind of get set up here on our bank. Okay. And while I'm filling out the data sheet, I usually have my air temperature going at the exact same time. So I get my thermometer out of the DO test kit. And let this hang in the shade kind of cloudy today. Otherwise, we'd have to make certain that the thermometer stays in the shade of our body or the shade of the bridge or the shade of a tree. But for today, we don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, so site name, we're at West Elm Creek. And the water body legal that long, I usually fill out when I'm back in the lab. We are at 9.43 a.m. And our date today is November 3rd of 2015. And so samplers is me, Kim Shaw. And Jerry is behind the camera, so she's included on our samplers. And weather. Now we got the sunshine shining out, but we do have some clouds in the sky as well. But I definitely do see blue. Make sure my thermometer stays in the shade. Um, so we still have fair skies, even though we have clouds. Um, I do see blueness, so that counts for fair skies. Wind speed. Got the grasses are blowing a little bit. So a little, but not much. I feel a little felt on my face, so I would probably say light breeze, felt on face, category number three, which is equal to four to seven miles per hour. The wind direction, I believe it was coming from my back. So that would be like a south-southeast breeze. So we are going to circle southeast, draw an arrow to where the wind is blowing to. So that would be up to the northwest is where the point of the arrow would go to. Stream stage. As far as here right now today, we are Probably a little bit less than base flow, so we would say low flow. And I'm looking at the rocks, seeing if there's a wet line. Um, I'm kind of looking at the vegetation um, to see if the creek is actively rising, falling, or if it's stable. I do see a wet line on a few of the rocks. So, and it actually did just rain uh, two days ago. So it's any, either we're somewhere about base or stable um, or falling. I would say it's probably slightly falling, maybe still. There's a wet line on the rocks. Um, so I would make a comment that it did rain two days ago. And approximately, um, I think here it was about 1.2 inches, I think. Better to go back and check the mesonet just to make certain that that was correct. Okay. So as I'm filling out the data sheet, it's been close to two minutes or approximately that. So you can read our air temperature. We might even want to wait another minute or so. But it's looking about 18 and a half or 19 degrees Celsius. We'll kind of wait a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do the stream side observations. So st stream side observations, we do pretty much from the reach of the stream that we can see. And I see trash. We have uh, different uh, cans. We have a new battery that was not here the last time that we monitored. So I'll circle trash number seven. In the comments, just say what I see. So uh, several beverage containers. We got a new battery. I got a shopping plastic bag here, 
Um, I don't really see much of anything else. The water is more turbid than what it normally is. It usually is uh, more clear than this. Um, so I would say, where is it? Unsightly appearance as far as color, that would be number four. And just say murky water in the comments next to number four. Um, do not see any floating detritus, no leaves, even though it is fall. I don't see anything floating. I don't see any persistent bubbles or foam and scum. Um, there might be a little bit of new siltation. I haven't walked in the creek yet, so I can assess that after I filled up my dissolved oxygen bottles and sample water bottles. So we don't want to go tramping in the creek too much before we make our collections. So I think we'll kind of keep it at that. We'll check back with our air temperature. And it's pretty much about 18.5, 19 degrees Celsius, so it hasn't changed. So we'll go ahead and write that for our air. We'll do 18.5. Okay. So now what we'll do, we'll take our thermometer with us and we'll get both of our dissolved oxygen bottles and our plastic filling tube and also our sample water bottle from our bag. And the best place or the place that we recommend is to fill on the upstream side of a riffle. That's going to be the place where the oxygen is going to be accurate or as most correct for the whole entire creek. Directly in a riffle is going to be the false highest area of oxygen in a creek because that's where the water is breaking over the rocks. It's going to be mixing with oxygen from the air, so it's not just the water. Oxygen, if we were to collect it downstream, like in our pool down there, that's going to be the false lowest area in the creek, and um, we want what's going to be throughout the creek. So we're going to collect it in a run on the upstream side of a riffle, usually kind of where the water comes into a V. So that's where we're going to go ahead and go out. And we're going to enter downstream of where we're going to be filling because we don't want to walk where we're going to make our collections. We want to keep it as free of sediment and um, dirt and muck on the bottom as possible. So you always want to enter the creek downstream and then walk upstream a little bit to where we're going to be filling. Okay, so I'm upstream of my riffle. Let's see if we can set some of this stuff down for a bit. As far as the thermometer, we can just go ahead and let this hang out in the creek on the bottom of the stream is fine. Keep my string there so I know where it is. Okay, on filling the dissolved oxygen bottle, I'm going to put one end of the tubing in the bottle all the way to the bottom and then you're going to angle the bottle upside down and try not to stick your fingers inside the bottle just kind of clamp the hose there not super tight where it's cutting off the circulation but just tight enough so it stays uh, the end of the tubing stays at the end of the bottle my right hand is always going to stay up out of the water and dry my right thumb is going to go over the tubing so it's going to be like a suction mechanism my left hand with the bottle is going to go down in the creek. My right hand is always going to stay up and dry. We want to insert the bottle into the creek at about wrist deep. Um, so that way we're getting something that's uh, oxygen and that's kind of mid-channel. And it's not just uh, oxygen that's on the surface of the water because that's going to be a little bit more oxygenated than the uh, mid-channel in the creek. So I'm going to insert my left hand into my creek water up here removing my right thumb the bottle's filling I'm going to remove the tubing angle the bottle up slowly I'm going to have a couple of bubbles we want those to come out one at a time lift the bottle straight up and that one is filled We'll set that down gently. We'll fill our second bottle the exact same way. 
Just put the tubing all the way in the bottle. Just kind of hold it there with our fingers. Right thumb goes over the tubing. Insert the bottle, wrist deep. Remove my right thumb. Remove the tubing as the bottle is filled. Angle the bottle up slowly so the bubbles come out one at a time. Lift the bottle straight up. Set it down on our bank. Okay, then we will fill our sample water bottle. And this is the water that we're going to take indoors and do the rest of the testings on. So it's a good idea to not touch the rim of the bottle or the inside of the lid with our hands because we are trying to keep uh, our sample as clean as possible so you don't want to contaminate it with whatever might be on our hands. Also don't lay the lid on the creek bank either because that will definitely pick up sediment and dirt on the inside of that. We don't want that. Just kind of hang on to it. What you want to do is rinse out our sample water bottle. So get a little bit of water in it upstream from us. Loosely screw on the lid, give it a couple of shakes, and I'm going to empty this rinsate downstream of me. So that's going to keep the water in front of us clean and fresh, and we haven't contaminated in front of us. Because whatever extra soap or water from our previous testings might still be in here. So that's what we're going to be rinsing out. We're going to rinse that out three times. Always emptying the rinsate downstream of us. And our third one. And on the final fill, try your best not to get any sort of sediment in the bottle. So don't uh, take the bottle all the way down to the bottom of the creek. And uh, if you have any sort of floating pollen or leaves, try not to get that in the bottle either. So go ahead and insert the bottle straight up and down. Have the opening about uh, wrist deep. Invert the bottle. Again, not touching it on the bottom. Lift it up. Screw the lid on it. And then we're good with a sample water bottle. Now we need to check our water temperature before we leave. On checking the water temperature, make certain that the bowl, the bottom of the thermometer, always stays in the water because anytime you lift up on it, it's going to be a wet bulb temperature, which is not the water nor the air. So we're just going to raise this up so we can see it, but keeping the very bottom of the bulb in the water. And it's looking like 15 degrees Celsius. So a little bit colder than what our air temperature was. So we'll take all this back to our bag. I think I'll make a couple of trips. I don't want to break anything. Okay, and then I'll kind of rearrange stuff here on the bank so it's easier for me to uh, fix our samples and we'll go ahead and start on doing that. <laughs> 